Hey guys and welcome to another Top Table Gaming video. This is going to be a faction review video. I'm Top Table Steve. I'm Top Table Jerry. And what are we going to be doing today? Today we are covering the Easterlings, who now have their own section. Yeah, so they used to be part of the Eastern Kingdoms. They did. Uh, so it was Easterlings and Khan, mm -hmm. and now they have their very own um, profile list. They do, so we're going to have a look at that today, and I think what better place to start than with the army bonus. Alright, so army bonus for Easterlings is no quarter was asked. And what that is, guys, is Easterling models receive plus one courage when their force is broken. Additionally, once per game, in scenarios where a dice is rolled to see when the game ends, so long as there is at least one hero model alive and on the battlefield, the Easterling player may choose to have the dice re-rolled if the scenario ends before they wish it to. So that's a couple of interesting things. The first part, obviously, plus one courage when broken, is always a win. It's handy, very yeah. handy. So it's quite interesting because their normal troops are Courage 3, which is now Courage 4, Yeah. Um, which is when meaning you need a 6 on two dice, it's very average now. Yeah, so it's, it's similar to Minas Tirith's mm -hmm. uh, rule, uh, they get a little bit taken away them because mm. Minas Tirith get it constantly, yeah. but then obviously the Eastlings get the second part of their army bonus. Mm. Um, so I think, you know, being broken, being Courage 3, like you say, it is going to be useful. You've got to bear in mind as well, if you've got a hero around, like he's pumping Amdor up to Courage 6 yeah. from Courage 5, so your heroes and your stand fast should be a lot more reliable. And then, obviously, the second part of the rule, when a dice is rolled to see if the game ends, uh, you can re-roll it, but only if the game ends. You can't re-roll it to try and make the game end if it doesn't. You can only re-roll it if... Because it says um, it's used to have a dice rerolled if the scenario ends before they wish it to. So if it ends too soon. Yeah. So it's quite cool, and these guys are fighting to the death, and they're not giving up. And it's still not guaranteed. No, it's, it's not. still a dice roll. Um, so it means that if you are the one who's broken and your opponent is close to, you've got that buff to help you stop running away and keep fighting. So it shows they are very much an aggression fighter down until the very last turn kind of force. And it already gives them a bit of theme, which yeah. I think is fair to say in the last edition, they just didn't have. They didn't really have anything. They were no, made. they were just... like a, a bland, sort of evil version of Rohan. It's uh, sorry, Gondor. Go, it was just his Gondor in different armour. So okay. it's really nice that they're going to get a theme. And then I think that's the army one. I think it's pretty good. I like it, it's cool. Cool, next up the alliance table. So, the alliance matrix. Mm. Uh, Easterlings have, uh, in, as a, a green allegiance, they are green with Mordor and the Variags of Khan, which makes total sense. Makes a ton of sense, right? We see them walk into the gates of Mordor, yeah. and I would say Khan, same. Same kind of setting, and they used to be merged with them, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So then on the yellow, uh, which is convenient allies, yep. um, they are convenient with Corsairs, mm -hmm. Harad, Isengard, Moria, and the Serpent Horde. So Again, does make a lot of sense. All the Fallen Realm stuff, right? Yeah. Which is really cool. Um, and then obviously everybody else is red, yeah. which is cool. Uh, and now we've covered the army bonus and ally table. Should we jump into the profiles? Let's do it. Alright, so now we're going to jump into the stuff we love chatting about, which is the profiles. And I've got the new book in front of me, Steve has got the old one, and we'll go through the profiles, let you know what we think of them, and obviously discuss any changes. And worth noting, before we jump into this, guys, this army can, of, of course, take uh, Kamul the Easterling, mm -hmm. but as we've done with all the faction reviews, if he's not in this army's list in the new book, we won't cover him again, you'll find him in Mordor in in Kamul's case, right? Yeah, so when we cover Mordor, you... That's where you check it, but this army can also take Kamul the Easterling. So, the best place to start is probably the iconic hero, which is Amdur, Lord of the Blades. Cool hero. Alright, so he is 130 points. So he's 30 points more than he used to be. So he was 100 points, so he's mm -hmm. seen a pretty hefty price increase. Yeah. Let's see why, because I always thought he was quite tasty, he was one of the characterful bits of it, it was otherwise good. bland. Yeah. Um, I think our first game, I was using Easterlings when we met. I used to have like Easterlings and Isengard. Uh, as a possibly. Thing. I can't, I, I, I mean, mm. it was that long ago now, mate. It feels like we've been mar married for 40 years. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like probably the gold <laughs> anniversary scene. Anyway, he is man, Easterling, infantry hero, and he's a hero of valor as well. Um, so, stats uh, move of six, bite six, four plus shoot volume, strength four, defense six. Three attacks, three wounds, and courage five. Any changes there? So straight off the bat, the last three stacks, he's, he used to have two attacks, 
two wounds and courage four. Wow, so he's actually gained an attack, a wound and some courage, and obviously with the army bonus, when you're broken, if he's around, he's going to be courage six. Yeah. Uh, and he is three might, three will, one fate. So he was, he's always got, he always had three might, uh, one will, one fate, which is all profile. Well, that's huge because that was one of his failings, like a wizard could just mm. have an absolute ton of fun with him and yeah. have him doing whatever. So I mean, the three will means he's a bit more resilient. War gear, uh, he wears heavy armour and carries Dirtus, the silver falchion. I've probably butchered same. that name. <laughs> yeah, I'll just do it the same way. So, <laughs> Dirtus um, is basically an elven made hand and a half sword. Yep. Um, so he can fight one or two handed, uh, which is wicked. Heroic actions, he can heroic strike, which is pretty big for evil. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of evil. I think that. when you're building an evil list, you need to seek out some strike because they are lower fight as standard. Mm. and. Fight while you wins games when big heroes hit big heroes. Having a three might. Mm, three he's might. Stri 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 he's great. He's also got a heroic challenge as well. And as in for options, he's got a, an armored horse for 15 points. Yeah, same. Same. So then we get into special rules. So he's got quite a few. He's got blood and glory, yeah. unyielding combat stance, mm -hmm. phalanx, and the gleaming horde. All right, so Blood and Glory is unchanged since the last edition. Do you want to tell us what that is? Yeah, so Blood and Glory basically means that if um, Andor kills an uh, enemy hero or any hero, uh, he regains a point of might that he has lost previously in the battle. He cannot go past his initial his starting point. But well, that's really nice, and obviously he's, he's got a heroic challenge. It shows that he's there as like one of the best duelists in Middle Earth to go and mm. fight other heroes toe to toe. Keep your mid heroes cool. away from him and your sort of captains and stuff. Yeah, exactly. He's also got unyielding combat stance, as we mentioned, which means whenever you're not prone on a 4+, plus, you're just not. And that's amazing if you that's get cool. hit by like a stray cavalry charge on a hero, it means he's not. Because when a hero gets like trapped, knocked over, like it's dead. He's in trouble. Yeah, yeah. so he's got it, one in three chances that not. It just shows that he's really agile on his feet and he's ready to do business. He's also got phalanx, which you're going to see a lot in this list, and that means Easterlings can use pikes and shields at the same time without penalty. Furthermore, should a model on foot with this special rule lose a dual roll, up to two models that have the phalanx special rule can make way instead of one. So it shows that they're really kind of elite formation fighters yeah. and they're hard to trap. Yeah. So it means you can give way with two models, so getting the trap when someone hits the side of lines is going to be much more difficult. Yeah. Um, what it also means is because obviously you're going to use a lot of pikes, you're going to be three deep. Yeah. So it means that the front guy won't be trapped because both the pikes can move back. So Normally you can only move one, make, exactly. one make way move. And that was the problem with the pike wall, you hit it. Yeah. The front guy would technically be trapped unless he had room either side. Now you can really block it up and hold, which is cool. And he's also got um, the Gleaming Horde, which is um, this model gains the shield wall special rule while they remain mounted. So on foot, two can give way. Um, mounted, they get shield wall. Even though they're not on foot, the plus one defense bonus is applied to both rider and steed. Ooh. So you can run. Again, I think they're a really cool like formation army, so you can run your cab in a line. And actually, also, and, and get the shield wall special rule for both mountain riders, which is really yeah, cool. that is really cool. Yeah, hero models with this special rule that do not have a shield will still benefit from this rule. So even though Andor has not got a shield, oh, yeah. you can put him on his armored horse with some cataphracts, and they're all going to go. He's going to go up to like defense seven. Defense seven is good. And his horse is going to go up. It's an armored horse anyway. It's defense six. And then it's going to be defense six. Yeah. Like. That's, that's pretty cool, that's right? Decent, yeah, that that's is decent. nice. You can see where. Yeah, yeah shoot on the half. Yeah, off. and what you can see where these thirty points are going yeah. in the, like the extra will, the attack, the win, the courage, and we're not done yet. So we've also got Herald of Victory. Uh, I'm not sure if he had this nope. in his pre. He did have this in the previous edition. I don't know if it's changed. So all these silly models treat Andor as a banner. Oh, yeah, yeah. Should he kill the enemy leader? So again, he's really about going toe to toe with heroes. Uh, the banner is increased to six inches. That's cool. And as someone who played uh, Boromir with Bandera Grondor mm -hmm. um, recently, like a six inch banner, mm -hmm. including let's say he's mounted his horse, it's like a 13 inch bubble. Yeah. It is like, really it's good. It's insane. Really good. We had it, um, because we've just played doubles recently. Mm -hmm. I actually played against Bandera, but we had um, LSR. He's a banner, six inch banner yeah, on his yeah, horse. It is. It's awesome. It's incredible, it's right? Awesome. And then he's got one more rule uh, the Lord of Blades. Whenever an enemy model in combat with Amdo declares a heroic strike, Amdo may immediately declare the same heroic action for free. Mm, that's beautiful. If he's already declared any other kind of heroic action, he may change his choice, uh, but he does not regain the might point. Now that's huge because the amount of times you go, are you, I know it fixed it with the time exception, it's like, 
are you going to strike? Well, I am if you are. Well, I'll combat, so I'll strike, or I'll strike, so I'll strike. Mm -hmm. That probably made no sense. <laughs> but you know what I mean? I know right? It's the age-old dance yeah, yeah. of the combat phase. So it mean, you may lose the might, but it means, oh no, you've been heroic combated into. I can change my mind. I'm going to match the strike. Or you can see the heroic combat coming. Mm. He's, so you go, so let's say Amdo here goes, cool, I'm in a heroic combat. LSR here goes, so am I. You go, uh-oh, change my mind. I'm striking. Mm. To stop, to stop the missile that's coming in. And he's fight six base. And if, if you don't do it that way around, mm. if you are countering, you could strike for free. Mm. Now he's all he's already got to strike, is that right? He does, that's he can do. Heroics. So yep. the fact that he's got three might, so he can choose to strike whenever he wants, mm. but he can also counter strike for free. But it does also amazing. only trigger if he's already in combat with a hero. Yeah. So but it's kind of time really It is, yeah. yeah. It is kind of situational, but another really cool rule, uh, and the fact that Hero to hero, which he's meant to do, like he can get his strikes for free. Yeah. At fight six base, um, it's kind of a bit of a beast now. He is a beast. Like he's got the three attacks now. He's got the extra will. Um, obviously, he can be four dice on the charge. The fact he can be like defense seven with a defense six mount, mm -hmm. running forward with some cataphracts. That's beautiful, man. All these things forces that you used to see, like I'd come in pretty much, mm -hmm. because they never really had that big beefy hero. No. Now they've got it, so you can bring an Eastern mm -hmm. Force and not bring Kamul if you so I, wish. I still think both are fair game, yeah, but yeah. yes, yeah. I think Amdor now is kind of probably my first pick instead yeah. of my second. He is cool. He is really uh, cool. And that is Amdor Lord of Blades. Next up we have an Easterling Dragon Knight. I used to love this model. Yeah, and I look at it now and I go, oh, for some reason. <laughs> Again, they were one of the first forces I got. And I'm going to call that Matt Davies. The reason I bought this army is because a couple of years ago Matt converted a load of Easterlings, made them up mega. And every time I see him, he promises he's going to paint them on the channel. Still haven't got it. <laughs> it's been years, Matt. Come on. Anyway, Easterling Dragon Knight, 65 points. Any change? So they're cheaper than usually 70. Okay, cool. Uh, and then he is move six, fight five with a four plus shoot. Although that's kind of, kind of irrelevant until you get to the troops. Um, strength four, defense six, three attacks, two wounds, courage four. And he changes exactly that. And he's two might, zero will, zero fate. Exactly the same. Very cool. Um, he's war gear, he's heavy armor, and two swords. Mm -hmm. He can heroic strike. So you got another heroic strike in here, which is tasty. Yep. He's clearly another combat hero, and he can take an armored horse for 15 points. He's a mini Amdor, yes. like a very mini Amdor, yeah. but he is. Um, special rules, he's got the exact same ones as uh, Amdor, so he's got Blood and Glory, Unyielding Combat Stance, Phalanx, and the Gleaming Horde. So okay. He's got all those tricks that he had, and then he has a couple of special rules. Shield of Blades. Dragon Knights can use the shielding rule while armed with two swords. Yeah. Just so he's six attack shielding, so if he gets caught in a place he shouldn't be, you can really block it and please do your little sword impression again. No, I've done it once. Just You've got it on camera, just, just, just keep just rewinding. Once even. Rewind, play, once rewind, even. play. Uh, and then he's got Knights of the Dragon Cult. Dragon Knights may only include Easterling models with the Black Dragon upgrade within their warbands, which we'll get to. Mm. Which is real interesting. Really good. Mm. Um, Worth noting as well, he is a minor hero. Yes. So he's only leader six anyway. Yeah, but he is another. He's the kind of thing that, even though he's minor with his special rules, he is. You're going to think about him if you come, if you've got that facing on the side table plus Andrew, you're like you are. Oh so my God, so my what heroes are in trouble. What it means is he's leading your cataphracts. That's what he can take because yeah. you can upgrade cataphracts, which we will get to um, when we get there. So that is the Dragon Knight, and he's quite a cheap hero for three attacks and two might. He's very good. He's 80 points on his horse. He can shield. He can heroic strike. Um, obviously, he's going to get the benefit from the shield wall stuff. Like he's pretty tasty, man. Yeah, I like it. And with him done, let's have a look at the uh, Eastling captain. So 50 points, uh, man, Eastling infantry hero, hero of fortitude, um, war gear, oh, profile even, move six, fight four, four plus shoot, strength four, defense six, two attacks, two wounds, courage four. Uh, all the same, he's gone up by five points yeah. in value. In, yeah, in value. And he is two might, one will, one fate. So standard uh, captain. Goal. Standard war gear is heavy armor and an Easterling glaive, which is a hand and a half axe. Okay. So is that any change? Uh, that wasn't named. He just had heavy armor in his war gear. So he has got the. Um, that's pretty nice. Mm. So you can go one or two handed, and he can do the old piercing strike. Oh, piercing strike. Yeah, yeah. Uh, his heroic actions are march. Obviously, he gets the the usual three, like everyone. Um, mm -hmm. And options: swap the Easterling glaive for an armored horse and a sword for ten points. 
That's interesting. Yeah. Um, obviously, you wouldn't be swinging a big two-handed axe while riding a horse. Mm. Um, he can take a bow for five points and a shield for five points, and he has the phalanx and gleaming horde special rules. Not a bad little captain. He's decent, yeah. He's good. He's got the fight four, so that's kind of the sweet spot for me. Mm -hmm. He's got the two might. He strength four, fight four. Pretty good. Captains. Or a ca guy. Yeah, all captains <laughs> have the sort of heroic march, mm. uh, which is good because I, I kind of noticed this uh, last weekend that heroic march is another one of those heroics that people don't think too much about, but when you haven't got access to it with everyone, it's you think, oh, I wish I had heroic yeah. march. I wish I could heroic march with that warband. So it is really good. Captains are still going to see a lot of... Uh, it's a really big like, change up in the new edition, having to really pick your heroes and being limited on your heroic actions instead of just knowing that you've got a might pool across the board and you call what you want, where you want. Yeah, yeah. Really nice finesse touch. And then last up, I think, in the hero section is the Easterling War Priest. Mm -hmm. So this guy is 60 points. He's Same. man, Easterling, infantry hero and hero of fortitude. He's move six, fight three, which you get, he's not meant to be on the front line. Mm -hmm. Uh, strength 3, Defence 5, 1 Attack, 2 Wounds and Courage 4. All the same. And he is 1-3-1. Uh, Wargate is Heavy Armour and Easterling Battle Stave, mm -hmm. can be, which means it can be used as a spear or a two-handed axe. Nice. Um, so he can spear support and be casting his spells. He can heroic channel, as most, I think. Yeah. Like all wizards go. He can take an armoured horse for 15 points, as can everything mm -hmm. in this army. Um, and he has two magical powers. He's got Blade Wrath. Mm -hmm. And Fury Easterling, which I think is very much the same. Yeah, so Fury Easterling just means it only yeah. it counts for Easterlings. Um, and in this army, Fury is big, is mm -hmm. big because before their special rule kicks in with the courage, mm -hmm. they are very low. So having Fury and passing those courage checks to charge the big nasty things is a big thing. So um, it's still a very viable unit. Okay. All right, so Blade Wrath is worth talking about. It's got a casting range of six inches, and it casts on a two plus, so it's super reliable. Mm -hmm. Especially the fact you've got a mic point there, so if you yeah. fluff it, you can just boost it. And what that does is you cast it on a friendly Easterling hero within six, and that makes him resolve his attacks for the turn at strength six. Now let's just go back to Amdor, which is the three attack, four on his mount monster, who loves challenging heroes and strikes for free and all that jazz. He's swinging at strength six, man. Like even Iron Hill stuff is cutting through on four fives. It's very good. It's and very with, good. With that point of mind, if you channel it, yeah, that turns to strength ten. The channeled version is strength ten. ten. <laughs> wow! So Andor wins a fight and he gets to strike for free, and he's resolving strength ten. Potentially eight attacks if the other heroes on foot. That is incredible. Amdor has that is become kill whatever he an absolute monster. How can you not love that? So if you ever see Amdor with a war priest lingering near him, like yeah. kill the war priest yeah. or <laughs> like shoot everything at the war priest. And with that guys, that is the last of the heroes. Let's have a look at the warriors. Right, so now we're into the warriors of these things. We've only got two profiles here, so you've got six in total. Um, so one of, definitely one of the smaller armies, we'll chat about that at the end. But the first one is the Easterling Warrior. So yeah. he is a massive seven points. Man, Easterling, Infantry and Warriors, you'd expect keywords wise, he is move six, fight three with a four plus shoot value, strength three, defense five, one attack, one wound, and courage three. Mm -hmm. Pretty much the same. Not bad, seven points, standard Great fight three. He's got the defense five, um, which you can alter. Standard war gear is heavy armor and sword or dagger. Mm -hmm. um, obviously now, it specifies the weapon options that are standard and yeah. plenty of options so you can get a banner in for 25 points um, you can up uh, actually it's not just the mounted stuff you can upgrade him to a black dragon for two points right. so you can take the foot dudes with the uh, dragon knight as well yeah uh, and a black dragon upgrade actually gives you fight and courage value four cool so you can get yourself a fight for and he's still only nine points at fight four i'll take that it's decent yeah, yeah. Um, you can also take a pike for a point a shield for a point and a bow for a point. Yeah. Um, you're normally going to see these with like pike and shield, or because obviously they don't suffer the penalty. Mm -hmm. um, and you give them a black dragon, they're 11 points each. Yeah, um, to fight for, right. which is pretty tasty. Yeah. Um, special rule phalanx, which we've covered, which means they can use pikes and shield without penalty. And furthermore, should a model on foot lose a dual roll, two can give way. Again, lets them sit in that three deep formation without yeah. penalty. 
And that's the infantry, or the warrior even. Now we'll cover the Eastling Cataphract. Love these models. Yeah, they are nice. Really cool. One of the really cool... Um, really individual plastic. horses. Yeah. yeah. One of the cool old plastic cav kits. But move six, obviously, but because you've got the cavalry, you'll move ten. Yeah. Um, fight three, four plus shoot value. Um, strength three, defense six, one attack, one wound, courage three. Uh, and the difference here is because the, sh the defense is up from the normal warriors because you've got the shield as part of your standard war gear. Yep. And they have 14 points and it's an armored horse. Yes. Worth knowing everything in this list comes with armored horses, which I really like. And seeing that we now know you can get that armored horse up to defense six. Whoa, so good. Um, cool. Again, you can take a banner, you can take a war drum for 15 points, which is really That's interesting. Really good. Free heroic marches. Yeah, it is. And again, you can upgrade them to black dragons for two points, which is going to make them fight and courage four. Mm -hmm. But fight four, defense six to seven, not too shabby. No. Um, and they've got the phalanx special rule, which we covered with the warriors, and obviously the gleaming horde, which means they get the shield ball special rule while mounted, even though they're not on foot. And the plus one defense is applied to both rider and steed. So defense six horses mm -hmm. with a war drum, mm -hmm. moving fifteen inches free for free towards you. Uh oh. <laughs> so defense uh -oh. six. Think about that. Defense six horses. So even if you're a shooty army, mm -hmm. you've got fifteen inch movement horses because they've got a war drum. You do. And the horses are defense six, and the oh. warriors are defense seven. Wicked. That's There's cool. some cool little tricks in this That's army. Like and with that, guys, that is actually the last of the profiles. So before we went too in depth in it. We're going to cut and come back and tell you what we feel about the army. Right, so there you go. We've been through the profiles, the army bonus, the alliance table. And I've got to say, I quite like that. They definitely have their own theme now. Yeah. And what I feel that is, it's like a, a super military, like highly trained force. Yeah. Like some of the, like the army bonus, like they never give up, they're there till the end. Um, and then the fact that you've got like the phalanx rules, so you can now block them. And the pikes can both give way yeah. on foot, and then obviously the mounted guys can shield wall while mounted, and you can actually throw an army of all defense six and seven, including the mounts, up the board. Yeah. Um, especially as you said, using the war drum. Yeah, it's going to be um, insane. That. And then you've got a dragon knight, which is a might battery that can do some damage. Um, and I'm doing so. It's pretty scary, actually. I like the fact that. You look at it and it looks like a very scarce list, there's not a lot mm -hmm. to it when you look at the, the list in the book, but it's got so many options, you can chop and change and you can create your elites even though there's no elites there. That's it, right, it's you can really give cool. both of the troop choices the Black Dragon upgrade, yeah. you've got banners, you've got war drums, you've got pike shield bow, like it's literally a, it does read as a bit vanilla, vanilla especially on the troop side, but it, what you've actually got is a ton of customization options yeah. to how you like to play, you could take all infantry in a huge block and not have to worry about finesse deployment so you don't get trapped yeah. or you could take all mounted and like you said war drum mm -hmm. defense six and seven so you're shooting no matter what's going to want six is flying up the board 15 inches turn one it's going to be it's, it's going to hit very hard mm. um i'd i'd personally off your sort of a shield wall yeah. so that's what i build with it so i'd have my high defense at the front then just normal like the pike guys at the back mm. um with a little sort of Avenue. catchment yeah. of fast moving, quick yeah. moving, sort of, you know, grabbing all the different objectives mm. and stuff like that. And I think it could work very well. Plus, you've got the heroes in there that can smash up other heroes. We're well, not forgetting, there's also Kamul on a foe beast flopping around <laughs> yeah. as well. <laughs> That's true. So, I, I usually true. like to chat about whether I think these lists are competitive. I don't think Easterlings are top tier, but I do think in the right hands they could be very good. I think you, you could find a niche list with really these players that could do well. But yeah, I agree with what you're saying. There are, are lists out there already that are kind of sort of pre-chosen for you to do well with. But the most exciting thing for me is they now have their own theme, flavour and feel. Yeah. And um, they look beautiful on table. And the problem with whenever we film any of these faction reviews, I want to go away and collect that army. <laughs> Steve did that at Angmar, he's like, oh my god, that's yeah. happening. Well, that's um, that thing in Easterlings. Have you? They're like a background project, so in between stuff. I've got a little war band band of... Uh, that's cool. So, yeah. so that is our Easterling faction review. Hope you've enjoyed it. And if you want to see some Easterlings on the channel, let us know in the description below. Yeah. Make sure you check us out on Patreon, support the channel and help us grow. And also follow our Element Games affiliate link for great discounts on your wargaming Lord yeah. of the Rings toys that also helps our channel grow. Uh, as always, I've been Jay. I've been Steve. And we'll see you in the next video.